So a non-specific response to um, pathogens and things that are going to get in your body that you don't want to be in your body. Um, the basic ones, first of all, your skin. Uh, they're very much a physical barrier. Um, you, the cells of your skin, and it, it might seem odd when we talk about skin cells because you know, we've done lots of work on cells and we think of them these little jelly-like blobs and um, we're quite delicate and you might think, well hang on, how come my, my hand doesn't burst? If my hand's made of cells, why does it just simply burst when I touch it? Well of course it's not just the cells, there's all kinds of other material in there, collagen and keratin and things. But your skin cells, in, um, specifically if you're looking at them here, your skin is in a series of layers. And you have a layer where there's lots and lots of um, mitosis going on and these cells push themselves up towards the surface of your skin. And as they move up towards the surface, um, they become keratinocized. Now, keratin is this protein um, talked about before, uh, very tough and it's waterproof and these cells called keratinocytes are getting filled with this keratin by the time they reach the surface they aren't really they're not a cell as we'd think of them with all the kind of organelles and, and stuff in there um, they're basically just a shell full of this waterproof material so when we talk about them being dead you know they, they died a long time ago really um, and, and they would continually be flaking off and you're continually um, sending up these um, new cells from underneath. By the way, if you're wondering about tattoos, why these don't get pushed up, the tattoo is, is done at a layer below this. Um, although eventually, um, since we're talking about immunity, um, the ink in there can't be broken down by your white blood cells, but it, it, over time it starts to get slowly broken down, which is why the, the tattoos tend to fade a bit, um, given enough time. But the, the white blood cells simply don't contain the enzymes to break the tattoo ink down, which is, is why it stirs there. Anyway, Enough about tattoos. Um, we also have mucous membranes. Let's use green. Why not? Of course, mucus normally isn't green. It is normally clear. Green tends to be indicative of um, infection. Notice the spelling on here of mucous membranes, just to be confusing. The actual substance is mucus, not the spelling. Um, oh, goodness me. <laughs> Don't know the spelling because I've spelt it wrong while I'm chatting to you. There we go. Mucus, um, O-U as in the English, colour, okay, just to be awkward, there you go, you can see how easy it is to make spelling mistakes, but there it is, um, I'll charge your attention, mucus, um, sticky substance, so pathogens, and all kinds of other things like particulate matter, throw that one in, smoke is a good example of this, smoke of course is just made of uh, tiny little um, particles of, of burnt, whatever it might be, um, leaves or you know certain things um, some of which are so small that they tend to not stick in the mucus they go straight down into the lung but some of the larger bits will, will get stuck in here um, if you ever go to uh, large cities things like London um, you often end up with sort of black snot if you spend a lot of time in the center a lot of particulate match in the air that you, you don't usually um, you're not usually aware of but it is there um, and the, these mucous membranes are found all the way down um, your esophagus and into your um, your lungs, so down the windpipe and um, the trachea and so on. Um, do remember that it is the cilia that are responsible for wafting, there's a great word, that waft the mucus along and that the mucus is produced by these goblet cells and that both the goblet cells and the cilia sit in the epithelia okay epithelia is lining cells so if you've got a tube like a windpipe the epithelia are the ones um, that line there okay a um, couple of other specific ones that are mentioned um, in your tears apart from them being salty um, there are other chemicals in there um, that help to destroy um, pathogens. But antibodies are actually antibodies present in your tears. Uh, wax um, and acidic secretions. Of course your stomach um, is acidic, pH uh, 2 roughly speaking, um, but also the, um, the vagina is also acidic. Um, again simply to prevent uh, pathogens. It causes problems for sperm cells of course uh, as well which the way they get around that is, is by the, the, the fluid they're in is, is slightly alkaline which, which helps protect them. Um, so all of these are non-specific because 
anything that it comes into contact with hopefully it would destroy however you also get to a secondary defense so all, all these can sometimes refer to as you, your primary defenses the secondary defense involves cells however they're still not specific and these are the phagocytes of which there are two types neutrophils and macrophages neutrophils are the most common it's about 70 percent of all your, your white blood cells are neutrophils these are the ones that you tend to see in pus uh, they don't live for very long um, but you know they, they do a fantastic job they um, between them these two cells basically will mop everything up um, whether it's old cells that are worn out um, cells that have self-destructed um, bits of particulate matter, the macrophage are often found in, in organs, so your lungs and your liver and they'll go around picking all this um, stuff up. When you look later at the T and B cells, what we call the specific response which is geared towards a particular type of um, pathogen, these things will still come along at the end and pick up all the mess and get rid of those things. Do remember here when you're talking about um, Sorry, I just had to pause then, I made a mistake on it and realised I didn't uh, want, to <laughs> want to confuse matters, right. So phagocytosis, uh, when you're describing it, and here's uh, one of our phagocytes with a nice lobed nucleus, and here comes um, our pathogen. There are receptor cells on the surface that can detect that there is something there that shouldn't be there. Now. The, the, where I went wrong, what I don't want to confuse you with, don't talk about these ones being complementary to the antigen. Save that for when you're talking about the specific immune response. It's a little bit more complicated than, than we'll add on here, so all we're going to say is that there are receptors on the surface, okay, and that they detect that this pathogen is here. Sometimes um, the, these phagocytes can't do this very well without the presence of... Um, antibodies being stuck on the outside. Remember that idea of agglutination, sticking uh, uh, bacteria and, and, uh, together into big blobs makes it easy for these phagocytes. But make sure you use this ter the, these, these terms correctly. Um, it's engulfed. So the phagocyte would engulf, the surface cell membrane folds around, um, so it makes it a little folded structure, and I'll use the same colour pen, why not? As, as it folds around like that, it eventually pinches off, so you end up with the um, pathogen, whatever it may be, inside of one of these little um, vesicles, and then lysosomes would release um, chemicals, lysins, <laughs> enzymes really, into there and digest um, that pathogen. Uh, there are a lot of other chemicals, for example, um, it, in your books it mentions um, opsonins, which are chemicals that are that, that are released to help this process work. Um, but that, that's the basic thing. It, it, people usually get it wrong when they, it, at this stage when they're talking about it being engulfed and the pathogen they, they talk about all kinds of wrong bits and go off on all kinds of um, levels which is why I uh, shouldn't really have made that mistake that I did before.